you know, I wanted to, I wanted to share this, um, because as, as we're navigating this, this world of advocacy for our children, and as we're seeing our governments on every level become more aggressive toward the citizens, and I, I've said this before, I, I track this back to 9-11 when we all just sort of laid down and were like, I would prefer safety over freedom. I would prefer security over liberty. And, you know, I think that now, 20 years removed from 9-11, the unfortunate aspect is so many people have forgotten what life was before 9-11. And, you know, we have been so conditioned now that, you know, the government's listening, the government's watching, you know, we're all being monitored. Uh, and some people, excuse me, some people just shrug their shoulders and they go, so, so what? You know, it's for our safety, it's for our protection. And, um, no, no guys, I, you know, with these tragic things that happen that end up being overhyped by the media, if you look at the number of days that exist in a year and then over the years, we've never lived in a safer time and yet tragic things continue to happen and tragic things have always happened. But in the grand scheme of things, the abuses and excesses of government, the corruption of government, the, the, the aggression of government toward its citizens is far more prevalent than the protection it provides us against external threats that, you know, are rare including school shootings. Rare events, comparative to my daily representing children whose rights have been trampled on, uh, where the um, abuses of government on my clients is very rare, to where we're representing them in juvenile court, uh, where... I've got abuse situations by adults. See, this is a daily. But because it's only impacting one kid or two kids or five kids and, and isn't some hyped, exaggerated event that scares the bejesus out of all of us to where we're all so willing to sit there and say, oh, protect me, government. Well, who's protecting you from the government? Because that's what I deal with and that's what I see. And so my perspective on that is... is I'm, I'm sorry, spot on. There just isn't a reason why we have handed over our freedom like we've handed over our freedoms. Why we haven't checked government like we need to check government. And have government back into a position to where it's answerable to all of us. And it's not right now. It's, it's totally out of control. And the people who work in government... You know, a lot of good people that work in government, but then, you know, it also just naturally entices the people that shouldn't be in charge of anything that, that are just natural despots, uh, that, that they themselves are damaged adults liking to abuse other people and like to see pain inflicted on other people. They are very prevalent in government. And because government tends to protect itself, then they give themselves immunity. Then they excuse, they justify the abuses and the excesses that they do. So in this particular situation, you know, I have high respect for parents willing to go the distance. Like, you know, like we've seen throughout the course of, of history and, and at various times within this country. All right. Look at the civil rights uh, movement in the 60s. You know, look at even protesting the Vietnam War. You know, I mean, for God's sakes, look at. Uh, um, I mean, look at the the, the revolution uh, separating from from England and, and fighting that battle. You know, in, in our founding fathers being willing to put 
their entire life, their livelihood, their family at stake by committing treason through the Declaration of Independence and the separation from England. I mean, at various points in our history as humans, you just got to stand up and say, that's it. That's enough. But it's scary to do that. Extremely scary to do that. So, but, you know, it makes you feel better when you start seeing examples of parents that, that, that have had enough and they just say, that's it. And Tisha is one of those people. And, you know, I, I, I saw this, um, you know, through various Facebook uh, or a Facebook feed um, to where Tisha went to Santa Fe, New Mexico, all right, to the state capitol. And she doesn't live anywhere close to that. She lives a few, oh, I'd say an hour and a half south. But with some situations going on with her child and the corruption involved there and the inaction that, that, that she's been meeting, um, she went to the governor's office and she changed her, chained herself to the door of the governor's office as a protest. Now, what did they do? You know, of course, they, they stepped in and, you know, because she had people there with cameras, thank God, uh, you know, they cut the chain off and then they proceeded to arrest her. But she made her point. And that point has to be made somewhere. And then somebody else will make another point. And another person will make another point. And so the courage that she had in putting herself at risk and having herself charged by the state. You know, there's a means to an end to this. And, you know, are we at that point to where more of us are going to need to step up like this and put ourselves in harm's way in order to reverse the mistakes that we made after 9-11 of just being so fear-filled that we were so willing to hand over so many of our rights um, and then allow this escalating situation of, of aggressiveness and abuse and corruption from our various levels of government. And we may be at that point. But I wanted to share an example of a parent that didn't care. That it was that important to make a point. So, bravo, Trisha. And, uh, you know, a great, a great example for us all. Okay?